Hey everybody, welcome to today's video. Today I want to show you how to make a little tool that we need to open up this Breitling watch. This friend brought me a watch in and the hand fell off. We needed just to open it up, pull the movement out and put the hand in. And unfortunately I gave my uh, openers to a, another friend of mine to work on some watches. But I want to show you here, if you take a look at the Breitling case uh, back openers, the dies for these, just the dies. We take a look at those. Um, here's a reason why a lot of watchmakers don't keep them in stock and some do. Um, they can be very, very pricey. For instance, if we take a look at the uh, price per die, and there are 18 different dies, is $80 each. When you do the math, 18 dies at $80 each, you can see you're over $1,500 for a complete set of Breitling dies. However, only about six of those are used, so keep that in mind. So to solve my problem, since I don't really need to go buy a set, I already own them, I just have to get them back, I decided I was gonna 3D print them. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I designed this, uh, how I modeled it, 3D printed it, and whether or not it works. Um, this is something that if you have 3D printers in your workshop, sometimes you need something to really help you get through a project, and these can be a lifesaver. I mean, I could have ordered just one die for this. Um, I could have even bought a cheap one for about $40, but it would have taken three or five days to get here. And within two hours of me designing this and sending it off to the printer, I had the tool in hand cleaned and ready to use. So keep that in mind. The first thing we're gonna to have to do is start measuring everything. So in this case, we have 14 sides. Um, that's always good to know because there are odd and even uh, slotted case backs. And we need to know the dimensions. In this case, it's 36.3 millimeters from flat to flat side. So those stats will be listed here on the screen and then we're gonna start modeling the case back opener for this particular watch. Okay, so we've got Blender open and we're gonna start modeling our case back opener for the Breitling watch. Now, this is pretty easy. Uh, you know, a, a lot of times people think making tools is a very complicated job. Sometimes you just need a tool to do a certain job and that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna get rid of our obligatory cube because we don't need that. So I'm gonna delete that and let's take a look. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here and we know for uh, the facts that the Breitling case back has a diameter flat surface to flat surface of 36.3 millimeters, thereabouts, and that the sides, the number of sides on the case back is 14. So what I wanna do is I wanna make a cylinder that has 14 sides to it, that is approximately, let's just say 14, or 36.4 millimeters in diameter for the inside of the uh, uh, wrench that we're gonna make. So let's go over to our viewport here and we're gonna hit shift A. I'm going to add in a new mesh and we're gonna call it, we're gonna make a cylinder and our default settings are 32, but we're gonna change this to 14 because we have 14 sides. Now, it is really easy with Blender to come over here and change the radius. Um, the radius of this would be uh, half the diameter. So the diameter is 36.4, which comes out to be uh, let's see, 36.4 divided by two. So we can just put in here, uh, where is it? Under radius, this is pretty cool because if you don't know the answer, we can do 36.4 36 divided by two, and there it is. Radius is 18.2 millimeters. And now we have a cylinder that mimics the uh, case back uh, nut ring. So what we want to do is actually make some changes to this. And the changes are that we're going to make like a, a wrench tube out of this to fit onto our case back. So I'm going to go into edit mode and I am going to face select. So I can come over here and select right here, face select, or I can press three on my keyboard. Keyboard, not keypad. With that done, I'm going to select this bottom face here. I am going to rotate down so that while that bottom face is selected, I'm going to hold the shift key and shift select the upper face. With those two faces selected, I'll press X on my keyboard, come down to faces only and delete those faces, just like so. Okay, so now let's grab all and we want still to be in face mode selection. And what I wanna do now is actually size this out about a couple millimeters and I'm gonna eyeball it. So I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna do three things here. I'm going to hit extrude. 
I'm going to hit size, and then I'm gonna hit shift Z. Now shift Z will size it only on the X and Y axis. It eliminates the Z axis from sizing. So I'm gonna zoom this or move this out with my mouse and make that about this size here. Okay, just about like so. Go into object mode, and if we look, we're about uh, 38.7, 39.7. I'm not quite round for some reason. I'm not sure why, but here we go. Uh, from this point to this point, we still want to be about 36.3 millimeters. Now, to double check the diameter of my inner ring, what I want to do now is just add in, I can either do a measurement between the two, or I can do Shift A, and I'm going to come over here and add in Shift A, a new cylinder. Where is it? Right here. And I'm going to give this uh, 64 sides just because I can. And I am going to make this... Uh, 36.4 millimeters that's perfect just like that and if we come into material mode so we can see both our models look at this from the top view I can grab this outer one here size this to be about like that and now you can see we have about well if we go from side to side 36.4 millimeters from here to here and that's what we're looking for let's get rid of this cube or this uh, cylinder because we don't need it anymore with that selected, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to grab my model. I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to hit all and I'm going to hit size Z and I'm going to make this a little bit taller. I want it to be about that tall, uh, maybe a little bit taller than that. Let's make it a Z and we'll make it about like so. Okay, that is the inside here is the inner diameter uh, matching the case back of our Breitling watch. Now I need to make some kind of a grip for this so that we can actually use our hands to open up the Breitling watch. And that's pretty simple. What we're going to do is add in another cylinder and I'm going to make this, uh, we'll make this 32 vertices. So I'm going to hit Shift A, Mesh Cylinder, and I'm going to move this, well, we're going to leave this at 32. Let's change that to 32. And as far as the diameter, let's make this uh, 24 and a radius. That looks to be about right. And I'm going to bring this up a little bit, hit S, Z, and I'm going to size that along like this. So far, so good. Okay, almost done. Let's go into edit mode. Let's take a look at, um, we, want, we want this to be hollow. I don't want to make this solid because resin is expensive, especially when you're printing larger things. And we're going to use this as a handle, so we want to make this a little bit uh, uh, hollow to allow us to lighten up the print volume of this particular piece. So what I can do is two things. I can actually create another cylinder and use it as a Boolean tool. So if I do Shift A, come over here and add in another cylinder. We'll size this along the Z axis. axis and then uh, let's see, size down. So it's about here. Let's take a look at the bottom. That's not too bad. Let's make it a little bit bigger, about like so. And then if I take this here and use it as my cutout, I can select that last uh, cylinder we made, shift select the handle that we just made, and then press uh, Boolean difference. Now, depending on where your Boolean is, you can either come over to where it is on the side tabs here and do Boolean difference. And if you don't have that, you can also press with a computer with a keyboard or a keypad Control, Shift, and Minus does the same thing. So that does a Boolean difference. Okay, so now I've got my handle cut out. And I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Just size down a little bit. And I'm going to move this down to about here. So far, so good. And what I want to do next is actually create the handle or the grip for the handle. And that's very simple to do. I'm going to go into Edit Mode. Make sure that everything is turned off. I'm going to come over to Edge Select right here, Edge Select. And what I want to do is grab each alternating edge. So I've got that one edge selected. I'm going to hold the shift key down and select the alternating edges. Now there's got to be an easier way to select these. I haven't figured it out yet. So if any of you know, just leave it in the comments section below. So again, I'm just rotating my model, shift selecting the alternate edges along the perimeter of the handle. Like that. So I've got all of the alternating uh, edges selected around the perimeter. What I want to do now again is to size these along the X and Y axis only. So I will do size and then shift Z 
to exclude the z-axis and I'm going to size these out and make those just a little bit bigger just like so and now I've got that looking about like it is there that's pretty good I like the way that looks with those same edges selected I'm going to do control B so control B adds in a bevel and I'm just going to bring that out a little bit and I'm going to round it just so I get a little round edge however many faces I want that looks pretty good to me okay now one thing about gripping this is that uh, we're going to have sharp edges on the top. So, of course, you know, tool makers like to make round edges. So let's grab this perimeter, this outer perimeter edge on the top and bottom of our handle. I am going to press and hold the Alt key with edge selected up here. I'm going to select the edge ring there. And then I will come over to this side, hold Shift key, Alt key, and then select that. And if we missed anything, we can come over and select the other ones just like so. And again, with the top one selected, we'll do the bottom. So I'm just going to go around the perimeter and select the bottom edge ring. And once I've got that all the way I like it, I'm going to press Control B and apply a bevel to that. So we'll just bring that down about like so, just to give us a little bit of a bevel. And you can see it's, uh, because I didn't apply the rotation and scale, it's kind of uh, mirroring itself or modeling itself more along the vertical axis than the horizontal, which is okay. We're just getting a nice round edge to this. That looks pretty good. So there's my handle. It's nice and big, and I like the way that looks. So what I want to do now is join these two models. So with the handle here and the case back nut opener here, I'm going to shift select that, and then I'm going to merge these together either with Control J or the Boolean tool. So you can select your Boolean tool, come over to Union, and then it will merge those two models together. Okay, so there is my Brightling case back opener for this 36.3 millimeter case back. I'm not done yet because we have to send this to the uh, 3D printer for slicing. Okay, so with that done, I'm, I'm also going to export it as an STL file so that we can send it to our slicer. Come over to File, Export, and then STL. With that selected, I'm gonna come over here and put a check mark in the selection only. So I'm only going to export that model. And we are gonna call this opener2.stl and remember its location. And that's done. Okay, so the next thing is to import it into our slicer. Now I use sheet 2 box because my printers use sheet 2 box slicer. Some of you may like it, some of you may not. It doesn't matter. I've heard all the rumors and the, and the, the ups and downs of using uh, the other slicers that are available, but sheet 2 box works for me. I'm gonna keep using it. Let's go to open and let's go find our model. Brightling opener. There it is, opener 2, STL. I'm going to double click that and bring that model into our printer. Okay, so there it is. It looks like it's got an error in it. That could be because of this. There we go. Okay, so now there's our model. And now the important thing here to remember is this model is exactly the size that we modeled it. Remember, resin will shrink. Resin shrinks depending on the kind of resin you have up to 4%. Now the resin I'm going to be using is a Soraya Tech uh, heat, uh, high heat and strength resin. That resin is really, really durable. So if you're going to make a tool like this to open up a Brightling, especially because Brightling cases tend to be really tightly wound, you're going to want something high strength. And the Soraya Tech seems to really uh, have that in mind. First thing I want to do is I want to rotate this so that it's 100 degrees in the opposite direction. And I will grab my rotate tool and I'm just going to come over here and rotate this like so because I want the leading edge that's going to touch the case printed on the top. And that way I'll have less errors in my printing along the top as long as I print this with the right settings. Okay, in addition to that, remember we're going to have some shrinkage. So I'm going to come over here to my scale tool and where it says uh, I've got ratio locked. I'm going to come over here, select that 100 there, and I'm going to do 101. Press enter. Okay, so I'm going to make this approximately 1% larger. Now, we're not done yet. I'm going to add supports. I don't want this to print directly on the print bed. It will definitely make it harder to scrape it off the build plate. You can model yours however you want if you want to do that. I'm going to add in supports, and we're going to add in heavy supports. So I'll come over to heavy supports, and I'm going to hit all. So I'm just going to hit all heavy supports for this particular model. I'm not liking the way that is, so I'm going to come over here and just add in a few more just because it gives me comfort and I can make sure that there's enough support on this model for printing. 
It's easy to go back and clean those off and sand this down because this is only a tool, a tool and it probably won't last forever because it's not metal. Okay, with that done, now we can go and slice this. So let's go back in sheet two box. Let's hit our uh, settings and just select the right resin. So if I come over here, I've got that done. I'm going to come over to, uh, let's see, I don't have that particular resin in here, but here's the settings that I use to print it. So I'm going to come over here. We'll just hit plus and then I'm going to hit edit and then I'll come over here. We'll type in Soraya Tech heat and strength resin okay and i want this to be printed at uh, five microns and we're going to do a bottom count of six on the bottom layers we are going to do an exposure time of approximately 2.5 seconds and a bottom exposure time of 38 that's pretty good light off two light uh light off two everything else looks good i'm going to come over here to advanced settings i'm going to turn on anti-aliasing with a level of one that's okay it's not going to really affect the inside diameter of our model. It's just going to make a little bit rounder edges, make everything a little smoother on the top. And with that done, I can send this over to slicing. Once that's sliced, I can go and take a look at my slicing here and just see if there's any errors in my print. With nothing done, I'll go ahead and save this to the micro SD card or the USB stick and we'll go print this and we'll take a look at what it looks like when it's done. So about two and a half hours later, this is the result of my 3D print. I decided to go ahead and print four of these in the most common sizes that uh, Breitling, at least in my area, uh, Breitling models that I typically open. Uh, so here's four of the ones that I did. Now, I would recommend that uh, you don't use a wrench on your watch. So whoever opened this watch previously used, probably used a pipe wrench or something on it to get it open. They scratched the hell out of it. And this is a much nicer way of doing it. Now, these aren't going to last forever. Um, they are probably only going to work maybe a couple dozen times before they start, you know, breaking or wearing down. But you can sand these down a little bit to get a little extra life out of them. And that's the really cool part. So any of the little marks on the top of the uh, prints where the supports were can be just sanded off. These are, you know, really durable models and they will hold up well over a long period of time. Guys, I hope you like this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to my channel as it does help my channel grow and I do appreciate it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. I do try to read every single question. Actually, I do read every single uh, comment, but I don't respond to everybody. Um, I just can't. I don't have time. Uh, anyway, I uh, hope you'll check out my channel for other videos and there's more coming very soon. Thank you.